Hi, Miss Stoner. I hope all is well with you during everything right now. I have decided to focus on Stephen King today and his influences and how they have shaped the world of literature and how they've definitely affected our culture in multiple, multiple ways. And many people have kind of just picked Stephen King, kind of made him this big horror writer who writes really violent books and I don't I feel like a lot of people don't take him very seriously but he has some major pieces that I feel like a lot of people forget to give him credit for I don't know that's just my opinion from what I've heard from a lot of people they kind of just roll their eyes when they hear his name because they think he's such a big author <clears throat> but he really does have some really impressive pieces in my opinion Stephen King was born in Maine in 1947. Most of his stories take place in Maine. Um, I feel like a lot of it came from his childhood. Obviously, he grew up all over Maine, and <clears throat> he really does write a good deal of his stories based in Maine, or at least based in the East Coast. Um, he wrote most of his life. He started writing when he was young, really, really young, actually six years old, and he then went and attended the University of Maine, where he was able to write his own newspaper column in the Daily Maine, which was known as the school newspaper of their university. And I tried looking into King's Garbage Truck, which is the name of the art of the uh, column, but I wasn't able to find too much information, like detailed information about it. I thought it would have been cool to find like a little piece that he had written, but <clears throat> I didn't have much luck. Um, he met his wife, Tabitha, while he was here, and she was really, really supportive of his writing, and she was also very passionate about writing, which really came in handy multiple, multiple, multiple times during his career, because she really helped him out and supported him. Um, he did teach at the Hamden Academy right after college, but he was only making like $6,000 a year off this teaching salary, so him and his wife did have to make concessions and go work at lots of other jobs in lots of different fields. Um, so he was very, very busy, but he still found the time to write. And he would still sell smaller pieces to different magazines. Um, examples are Penthouse and Cavalier. Uh, and he just really wrote whenever he could. And then he wrote Carrie. He didn't like it and he actually wanted to throw it away, but his wife Tabitha made him continue to write on to continue to write it and continue to work on it until it was published. And thank goodness for that because Carrie really revolutionized his entire career. I mean, he became Stephen King, I think, when Carrie was published to the world. I mean, like, no one really knew much about him on a grand scale. Um, when Carrie came out, it really kind of shocked everyone. And the movie was huge. And I really feel like it was kind of the start of his little effect <clears throat> on the horror genre because he really did kind of evolve it because as I had said it was kind of more of a joke prior in history around the 60s and 70s it was still kind of looked at as like a joke that should just only be in magazines that are made for teenagers and shouldn't be taken as serious like literature however when he came around which Carrie was in the 70s so it became more acceptable by people this genre of horror became more of like okay we could actually read actual books and not just it's not just for teenagers it's not just dumb little stories in magazines like they can actually make pretty amazing stories and pretty amazing pieces in this genre so i feel like it definitely gave more respect <clears throat> um Right after Carrie, Salem's Lot was published, and then all of those to follow. These are all amazing books. The Shining in 1977, The Stand in 1978, Misery in 1987, Tommyknockers in 1987, and The Green Mile in 1996. All of these books are pretty big pieces of King's, and they were all in, I mean, pretty early starting in his career. And to me, I was shocked because that's a pretty good amount of pieces to write in that amount of time and I mean most of his books are fairly 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 large except for his shorter stories obviously but I just was impressed by the amount of pieces that he got done in this time and the quality of these pieces okay Alrighty, so the piece that I decided to focus on was Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption so most people know this story as Shawshank Redemption the movie <clears throat> starring Morgan Freeman I loved this movie when I first saw it. I 
was really, really interested and I wanted to read into it and kind of learn more about it because I actually didn't know it was a Stephen King story when I first watched it because my mom didn't tell me, but I love Stephen King as an author during this time. So I decided to kind of look at Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. So I actually read a little bit of it when I was younger and I would jump around and just read it whenever I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> Like in high school, just because I was so interested in Stephen King's pieces, and I love a lot of his shorter stories. Um, but this was written in 1982, and it was actually published in one of his collections of short stories, and it was named Different Seasons. Um, but it actually had a subtitle named Hope Springs Eternal, which, if you've seen the movie, that's kind of a big part of the movie. That saying is, well, the whole movie is about hope, and hope's so hope is so important in this story. Um, this short story kind of follows the newer inmate at the time, Andy Doof. And he is actually one of the only innocent inmates, one of the few innocent inmates at Shawshank, which is the prison. This prison was really, really horrible at the time. It's still horrible today, obviously. Um, and you really see Andy, who's this like kind of clean cut guy everyone thinks that he's too snobby and too good for them but he's really just kind of like smarter than them it's not even like he feels like he's above them he's just kind of always one step ahead of them he doesn't really like stoop down to their like I don't know I guess he just doesn't stoop down to their level um he just stays one step ahead of everyone pretty much the whole story which is impressive um also a major major theme in this movie is the importance of hope because Andy literally never gives up on escaping Shawshank and getting his freedom and getting what he deserves the entire story. Because there's a lot of times when he's locked in solitary confinement, when he is just being beaten, 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 beaten horribly, and he still doesn't give up and he still stays calm and collected and he just fights it out. And he eventually escapes and I feel like the amount of hope that he had is the only reason that he survived. Also, the friendship that he gained with the men that he came close with, like Red, who's the narrator of the story, uh, really, really, really shines through that friendship can really save you when you're in a really dark place, or it can really bring a lot of people together when they're in a tough, tough, tough situation, such as being stuck in a horrible prison like this. Okay. So I thought that it would be pretty important for the author that I chose to, I mean, people need to know who he is. If he's kind of a nobody, but he writes good books, then that's not really someone who worthy of being in the anthology. A lot of authors at, in the anthology that we've read have been influential people who have changed the culture for their times. Um, so I decided to look at what people have seen King from like in the media wise. So I learned that he actually was brought to court in a pretty big case because, well, multiple times actually throughout his career. Uh, his story Rage, it was a psychological thriller. It kind of struck a chord in a lot of uh, high school students. And in multiple years, 1989, 1996, and 1997, various high school students brought weapons to their school campuses because they thought it was like paying tribute to this book and they were all really loved his reading and I mean his writing <clears throat> and I feel like this was another reason that people kind of started to dislike Stephen King because he was people were looking at it and they're like oh you're making high school students like bring guns to their <sighs> campuses which it's not that's not his intentions at all multiple artists like music artists have gone in trouble for the same thing um but he just, he writes really intense books and people take it too far sometimes, but that's not necessarily his fault at all. Um, mo most of it, a lot of his fans, well, sorry, that's not a lot of his fans. Um, there have been a good amount of fans who've actually been a little too intense. An example can be seen when in October of 2013, a man named Eric King actually broke into Stephen King's home and he threatened his wife Tabitha with like to burn the house down to explode the house but this obviously it was a bogus threat it nothing happened he didn't burn anything he didn't blow up anything um but the reason that he did this was because he claimed that king had stolen the story misery from his aunt and kind of wanted to get revenge on king 
Um, another big thing for King and the media was when he decided to travel cross country on his motorcycle and he would visit smaller bookstores and he was also touring his um, book at the time, Insomnia. So that was a really big thing. And I feel like all of these events pretty much like drew a lot of attention to him and like people definitely know who Stephen King is and I feel like that's very important when it comes to choosing someone who's going to be in a textbook. Alrighty, so this is kind of my argument for why I decided to include King. I basically believe that yes he is a very graphic author but that doesn't mean that he's not a good writer. Like he's it's yes it's graphic but it's so detailed and it's so creative and I mean it's kind of crazy the things that he comes up with like it in the in the book it when I mean the blood and all the hair and everything is just coming through literally the sink and the bathtub I mean that's just something that I never thought I would ever see before on a movie and then I've also read it the book and reading it was intense and the book I mean the movie obviously can't capture everything but the book was very very intense and I it is rough to read sometimes, but it's still very impressive that he can form these insane pictures in your head and you can kind of just watch the book happen. <clears throat> I decided to choose Rita Hayworth in The Shawshank be to prove my point because, like I said, he still wrote amazing pieces that weren't disgustingly horrific and violent. Yes, it was violent and yes, horrible things did happen in Shawshank, but it wasn't something crazy like It or Carrie. Um, <clears throat> it really, really rocked the world for this time. The movie did especially. I feel like a lot of people do not give Stephen King the credit that he deserves for his stories because I do feel like a lot of his stories are amazing and I do feel like that he is an influential author, influential author in the genre of horror and I just feel like he can't really just be ignored. I feel like he kind of, like I said, brought respect to the horror genre of writing and it really bugs me that a lot of people just kind of shrug him off, as I said, as some dumb teenage horror writer. But he really has some amazing writing and, I mean, his books have given me chills like every time I write, read them, even if I've read them multiple times. I just think that his writing is very, very unique and I think that he really did change the horror genre for forever and I think that he deserves to be honored and that students should be learning this importance and the changes that he made in our society. <clears throat> so that's my argument. I really love Stephen King and I hope that maybe even if you don't really like him you can kind of give him a second chance and look at his other pieces because they really can be super influential and I mean you can really learn a lot because he has so many hidden lessons and so many layers to all of his stories. I just think that he creates beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stories in an amazing way. And thank you for an amazing semester, and I hope you stay safe during the rest of this. Thank you.